Hey guys, welcome to part 8 of the survival series. Now I know everybody's been waiting for me to get fully back on track with this and this is the first one with a lot of things that are going to be coming in the future. So we're going to be looking into mining some stone and we've done a couple of bits which uh, it's going to be very similar to the tree chopping in a way. So we're going to have some objects in the world which are going to represent the things that you can mine from and then from there with mining them you're going to be able to detect which objects they are and then make some resources which you'll be able to collect from them. So it's going to instantiate those objects very similarly as I say to the trees. So what we're going to do is first of all we're going to take this script from when I redefined the tree chopping. So what we're going to do is that this one's on my main camera. I've added it to my package that I've uploaded to my website. It seemed like it wasn't there before so I've uploaded it now in case people have missed out on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to open Raycast Chop. And we'll open that up in Mono Develop. It'll be in part 4.5 for redefining the tree chopping. You'll notice that what we do is we we'll, we have a tree variable. We do a raycast, which looks for the tag of tree. It finds off auto fills in the tree variable that we've got up here by finding that the collider which we hit when we allow it through. So it's obviously only ever going to be tree when we actually hit the collider so it's always going to be for the objects that we want then it finds the um, player control script and if we press the left click and we can swing we'll take um, some life off the tree by looking at the tree that we found and its script which is tree controller so we're going to do something very similar with a rock or stone so I'll go through this first of all we've I've made two extra prefabs for this one similarly with the tree is I've got one called stone and then one called rock and there's two differences here one of the, the stone here one of them has just a box collider and then we make sure that we've got the tag of stone on this so this is going to be our main one which we're going to mine from so it's going to be split into smaller rocks let's say now I'll, I can leave that in the scene for now I guess and now my smaller one which is just going to be named a rock you can name it pebble whatever you want to know to make sure that you remember it but this one has got a rigid body on it and it uses gravity so then when it gets instantiated or created it will fall to the ground obviously you can change this up any way you like that also has a box collider that box collider just allows us to um, you know deal with it and it's quite an effective way to put on a collision on it without having to use a mesh um, collider because that's going to be more taxing on the game engine so we've got those two prefabs we're going to add the script so we're going to make create one script which will be added to the actual large stone itself which can which will control spawning of the little rock and dealing with its health and such and such so first of all we'll go back into the um, raycast chop I'm going to write the sort of raycast element to be able to detect when we've hit the rock itself. So what we're going to do is below here, you can see that our one of our last encapsulating statements is the second one down. And we're going to go below here, then we'll write um, else if open brackets hit dot collider dot game object dot tag is equal to in quotes stone we'll close that up add to curly brackets below then what we'll say like just similarly with up here we'll change but before we actually move over to that I'll write another variable called stone and set that as type game object so now as we've done up here we'll do stone equals hit dot collider dot game object and we'll close it up and add a semicolon then below here again we'll say player anim equals game object dot find open brackets in quotes fps arms underscore axe at idle or whatever your arms might be called close up those quotes we'll say dot get component open brackets player control and add a semicolon with this you don't have to use the game object dot find because it's a slower way of dealing with finding objects so what you can actually do is just hard code it in like we've done at the top here by adding game objects and such then what we're going to do to below there if I go down here a little bit I'll say that if 
input dot get key down open brackets in quotes fire one close up the quotes and the brackets then we'll say and and player anim dot can swing is equal to true then we'll add two curly brackets below there and say that stone dot get component open brackets now this is the script that we're going to create so we're going to call it stone controller dot stone health which we're going to have as the variable minus equals one and we'll add a semicolon there now what we're going to do is we're going to save that out and you'll notice that all these curly brackets encapsulate the statements that we need but you'll notice that I've used an else if this time so it will always check the if statements that within it and then it will always else is just a more uh, a better way of managing your statements so if it's not this do this if instead of writing a new if statement every time so when we go back into unity it'll probably complain about us that we can't find such and such script and this and that and the other but what we'll do this time is we'll go and create and we'll go javascript and we'll actually write stone controller like we wrote it in the script we'll open up that i'll double click that in mono develop when we've opened that up you'll see the other script side by side if you need to reference it what we'll do is i'll delete those two functions to start with then I'll write a variable called stone health like we had in here and we'll set that equal I set that as an integer equal to 5 then I'll have a variable called rock and have that as type transform and have a variable called stone and have that as type game object then we'll have function start open brackets and then two curly brackets below then we'll say stone equals this dot game object it's so we don't have to actually drag this object itself into its slot to reference it so we just it'll just find it itself without us having to do anything then we're going to write a function update so function update two brackets then two curly brackets below then we'll say that if stone health is ever less than or equal to zero then we'll add two curly brackets below and we'll say destroy stone and these that's going to have two capitals for each word it's going to have two brackets and a semicolon so we're going to call a new function here so it'll only do it every time um, we will do that if statement then we'll write another function called destroy stone like we did up there we'll add two brackets then two curly brackets below then we'll write destroy open brackets then stone and you see we needed um, the variable of itself so we could destroy it and then what we're going to do is we're going to say variable position colon vector 3 equals vector 3 open brackets random dot range open brackets minus 1.0 comma 1.0 then we'll add a bracket there add a comma then we'll say random dot range open brackets minus 1.0 comma 1.0 close that up and we'll add a semicolon but make sure you'll need another semi uh, another bracket at the end to encapsulate the last little bit then what we'll do is we'll say we'll instantiate open brackets rock comma stone dot transform dot position plus vector 3 open bracket 0 comma 0 comma 0 then we'll say plus position comma quaternion dot identity 
close that up, add a semicolon. Now what I'll do is I will copy that line again and I'm just going to paste it in two times below because we're going to just change the way the other ones spawn. So what I'm going to do is in this vector 3 I'm just going to um, change these to 2 and 2 and these one, this bottom one, 2, 5 and 5. And we're going to save it. So what all this is doing is it's going to each rock is going to have a portion of health, and then the only time that we ever attack it, click on it, do whatever, we're going to lose one of those pieces of health every time we can swing at it. We're setting the actual stone to find itself. If the health ever goes below zero, so it's essentially going to be destroyed. We'll call another function which is called destroy stone. We'll destroy that stone. We'll create a position which is in a random range between 1 and minus 1, which is just not very far. And then we're going to instantiate a rock, which is going to be our small object, um, at the stone's position plus uh, a vector, which is just going to be to make them spawn slightly further apart from each other. But you've got to make sure, I made a little mistake, that instantiate needs a capital I, and I'd missed that out on them. So make sure that you do check little things like that. We'll save back out and we'll go into Unity. Now once we're back here, what you can do is, if you've made your um, big stone into a prefab, by just going, you can right click or you can click there and say prefab and you can drag your object as many times out as you want. Your stone, you can actually add your stone controller to that prefab and then within your scene all your prefabs that you'd prefab there will change according to um, what your prefab is that you've made in your scene so you can see that I've added that script here and it will change every single rock or big stone in my scene so we leave, we, what we can do within the prefab for the stone itself what we can do is we can add the rock prefab here to it and it'll have changed it in here but we need to make sure that we select the stone prefab within the project and add the rock prefab if you've created one make sure you create one to add it to the actual inspector slot so now we've got the controller for the stone on here and then on our main camera we've got the raycast shop which will look for trees and stone now Oh, one quick thing to mention actually is if we're, when we're back into Unity, we need to make sure that it's actually get button down, not key, because a mouse click is an actual button itself. What I'll do for now is I'll make sure the stone health is actually equal to one for all my uh, prefabs, so we can only have to click it once to make it spawn the objects that we want. So before I actually do that, I'll get rid of that rock so it's out of the way. We've made sure that we've got the tag of stone, we'll go towards it, we'll give it a click and it'll have just spawned all our objects in front of each other like it's done. So what we can do then is we can select this prefab, we can duplicate this say three times and then we can press play our game and what we can do is that if I click that it'll have made ourselves one, then there and then here. So now you can see that we've got as many stones as we actually want and it will instantiate those um, rock prefabs that we've got in every instance. So you can change those depending on what um, objects that you've got within your scene. So there was a way to add another element to your game, so add another portion of collecting. Now I know that was using an axe rather than a pickaxe say and we haven't changed the animation so I might go into showing you how to swap up the arms and animation model and swap to sort of like a pickaxe style animation to be able to do the mining for that so that's pretty much it for this tutorial so I hope you enjoyed it and thanks very much for watching and don't forget to like comment and subscribe cheers